G'day. A lot of wood turners like myself get our wood from uh, various sources. Um, but also, we get wood from fallen trees, neighbours, etc. Give us a hoy. Now, this particular piece is no exception. And what we have here on the uh, table saw is a piece of cherry. It's been chopped from a tree that was... Now, it's these areas that I've marked here that dictate how large the bowl shall be. Because as we start um, turning, the bowl shape turns out and it's these low-lying valley areas on this piece of wood that uh, dictate you know, the size of the bowl. So what I'm going to do here is basically put it onto uh, the bandsaw and cut around and then I'm going to put it into a mould to fill up those valley areas with epoxy. So we end up with a complete round bowl blank that we can maximise the entire space for um, creating a bowl. So that's today's project. Um, you'll see in the project that uh, the cracks and voids and splits will all be filled up with the epoxy so that it will hold the whole piece together. And this is how we go about uh, maximising the bowl size from uh, a piece of timber. I did pour the epoxy in two sessions uh, over two days. The first session, as you can see here in a moment, it's um, not quite reaching the top of the rim of the, of the timber. In fact, it's only reached 50%. So I did a second pour, um, still didn't reach the top, but I left it as it was, about an inch from, from the top. Catch a glimpse there of a giant sized crack. That crack actually goes right the way through this piece of uh, timber. So it is fortunate enough that I did use this um, timber inside the uh, bowl black and use the epoxy to adhere all parts together. Now at the f bottom of the uh, bowl I've used uh, five minute epoxy and glued the, um, the glue chuck to the bottom. That maximises again the amount of uh, real estate we can to produce this bowl. I'm going for a full 12 inches on this and um, a three and a half at least depth. Using the easy tool scraper with the negative rake bit, um, this prevents any types of uh, catching. You see here there's some giant sized cracks and those cracks uh, although appear on the surface and are filled with the epoxy they go all the way through the actual piece. What I'm pointing out there is the actual epoxy and the wood timber. There's a gap there, so really what you have here is um, all that you're going to get. So it dictates the curvature of the outside of the bowl. Those um, gaps really do need to disappear. And um, that's what I'm aiming for on the outside of the bowl. Using the uh, half inch uh, bowl gouge, uh, with the uh, Ellsworth uh, grind to uh, take out the most of the timber on the inside. There are no real uh, significant epoxy surfaces inside the bowl, so it's quite safe to use the bowl gouge without any severe catches taking place. Hunter Tools Visory Cupped Carbide Tipped Tool is uh, a very, very quick roughing gouge. I use this. Um, Again, when there's no epoxy involved, just a straight timber. The chips that are coming off there are chips that you would normally get from any type of conventional bowl gouge. This tool is an excellent piece. Um, I've got it down in the links below if you're looking to um, look it up from Hunter. Um, there are no commissions or, or monies paid to me. Um, it's just uh, there as a service for you to find the link if you're interested in that type of tool. Click back here to the uh, half inch bowl gouge and uh, just taking out the remaining surface of the bowl. And then I do use um, the gouge uh, scrapers, um, easy tool scrapers at the end to uh, pretty up the surface before um, removing uh, tool marks, etc. You 
see here those cracks. Uh, not quite down to the bottom of the bowl, but uh, they go right through. Fortunately, uh, the resin has uh, filled them nicely. Using the uh, bottom bowl scraper to uh, get rid of those tool wipes, as I said, and um, making it nice and smooth, preparing for a sand. Now I take the sand from 120 grit right through to 240. Not much past that because I'm using the uh, tabletop epoxy as a finish and it needs uh, something to, to adhere to. So going past 240 grit, um, probably 320s max. You don't want to go much further than that, otherwise um, the tabletop epoxy won't adhere to the surface. And you'll see in a moment I use Total Boats penetrating epoxy. It's a two to one mix. I use a coat or two um, to seal the surface. Um, you'll see later in the um, your video here where I've got uh, reactions between the moisture in the wood and the epoxy and it, uh, it was a bit of a devil to get rid of so um, the table, the, the penetrating of the epoxy um, does help. If I hadn't have done this um, it would have been a, quite a mess. So that's the uh, total boat epoxy going on there now. It's very very thin, it's almost like water and um, it takes an, an overnight period for it to uh, dry. I just use a, uh, a, a workshop rag to um, take off the runny bits so we don't get any runs for it. So it's the next day and the bowl's been on the barbecue spit curing the uh, finishing epoxy overnight. Now if you can look, take a close look here, although it has a nice looking sheen, I don't know whether the camera's going to pick this up or not, but you can see fairly closely there's bubble and probably peaks and raises here. So certainly not a good finish. So I'm going to have to um, sand this back to 240, um, even the outside of the bowl. If we move around to the back here, you can see some uh, blemishes here and some reaction with the epoxy on some, uh, some moisture in the wood. So if I can get the camera really, really close, you can see that as around these parts here, they're very, very raised. So gonna get the bowl uh, back on the lathe, give it a sand and uh, a second coat. And uh, we'll come back tomorrow after it's uh, cured and hopefully um, finished. So it's the next day and uh, the bowl's had now two coats of the tabletop finish. Here's the uh, end result. I'm pretty well happy and pleased with this one. It's came out with uh, a nice finish. Uh, there are still some air bubbles that have come through here. Well, they're not actually air bubbles, they're a reaction with the uh, moisture inside the wood more than uh, air bubbles. I could put a third coat on, but you know, you can be very um, careful with this. If you sand back over a third time, the tabletop epoxy gets relatively thick and it loses its uh, transparency in some cases. So it's like, um, just do a little bit, don't do a lot, or we could go overboard. So, um, yeah, I'm happy the back is there. Um, the actual epoxy did its trick and it took up the real estate of the, the bowl's dimensions. This is now a full 12 inches and we're talking three and a half inches deep. It also has saved this piece of wood, which you can see, now epoxy filled, of course, and completely stable, some giant splits way across from grain to grain it adds character to the bowl well that's what i'm calling it
the third day, and after some consideration, I've decided to put a third coat on that bowl. It turned out spectacular. So you will see the bowl in the end of this video. Uh, meanwhile, I want to say thank you to all my uh, subscribers for this channel. I think we've just tipped the uh, 2,000 uh, subscribers, which I'm very, very pleased. I'm not really sure what the next video is going to be. It's going to be something different, um, so stay tuned. Please look at the stills at the end of the video here. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please do so, at least like, and um, see you guys uh, shortly. Cheers. Thank you.